we are coming to you live from the Bishop's Quarters here at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross on this border town. We're doing that for two reasons. First of all, the curfew here in Ukraine kicks in in the coming hours, so we don't want to be outside for that. But also, this is where we are staying. And here is why, because all of the hotel rooms in this town are full with Ukrainian refugees trying to get out of the country. So the congregation and the seminarians here have very kindly offered us beds for the night. So if that's the sort of hospitality being offered to a sort of a random group of Channel 4 news journalists who have just parachuted in, imagine the scale of aid and assistance being given to the over a million Ukrainian refugees from both within the country and outside. I've covered my fair share of refugee crises in, in, in my time, and what is sort of unique about this particular one is that you're not seeing the build-up of semi-permanent refugee camps on the border. At least you're not seeing that yet. And the reason is because of this vast international network of Ukrainians. Refugees leaving are connecting with others abroad. That is the case for the majority, but not everybody. That is not the case for 12-year-old 12 year Yeva and for her grandmother, Irina. Предисловие. Всем известно, что означает слово «война». Но практически никто не знает, что это слово предоставляет на самом деле. Все говорят, что это ужасно, страшно. Но какого размера страха таит это слово, никто не знает. И вот, когда ты стыкаешься с этим, ты не понимаешь, что делать. Тебя окружает страх и безвыходность. Когда ты распланировал жизнь на пару дней, и тут твоим планам помешала война и взрывы. Ева Скалоцкая started writing her journal 10 days ago in her bedroom in Kharkiv. She's written 80 pages so far. It's written in Russian. День первый. Начало. Это была обычная и, словом сказать, типичная ночь, 24 февраля 2022 года. Я настроила свой режим сна, и в эту ночь я спала крепко. Вдруг я в 5 часов утра почему-то проснулась. Это происходит часто, и что среди ночи я просыпаюсь. Я решила перейти со спальни в залу. Я прилегла на диван и закрыла глаза, начиная засыпать. И вдруг я слышу взрыв. Yeva arrived yesterday at a shelter in the border town of Uzhurid with her grandmother Irina. Her parents separated before she was born and Irina has been looking after her ever since. They were together in a neighbour's house when the shell hit their apartment. Krychevsky Street, Kharkiv. Бабушка пришла в залу и сказала, кажется, Путин начинает войну с Украиной. Она проснулась и увидела в спальне летающую ракету. У меня началась паническая атака. У меня тряслись руки, зубы и так далее. Ивана Фешко is the powerhouse running the refugee shelter at the school where Yeva is staying. Okay. In normal times she's the school psychologist. Told us that different children process wars in different ways. The older they get though, the more they internalize. She struggled herself because there are some things the Uber organizer can't control. Super. For British people watching this, how can British people help? Вплинути на свої власті для того, щоб в Україні закрила небо все. One minute. Я хочу сказати, що над небом ми нічого не зробимо. А якщо якщо москаль прийде до мене вживу, я його руками вдавлю, а бомбу я не зупиню. Ракету. Ivana doesn't bottle things up. Either does Yeva. She writes wants to try to publish her diary as a book, even has a working title, War in 2022, Through the Eyes of a Child. 
What was the hardest part of the book to write so far? When I go and leave Kharkiv, because it's my favorite city, it's my house. The Kharkiv, Putin is destroyed the city. And it was the, beauty, the most beautiful city in Ukraine, probably in Europe. And after that, my favorite zoo, my favorite park with attractions, uh, with, with popular, popular streets, it's all destroyed. Which of your friends do you miss the most? I all. <laughs> all. It's my, it's my big family. Yeva isn't sure what will be in the next chapter, the one about her being a refugee. Unlike others, herself and her grandmother don't have relatives they can go to abroad. They are exploring a way of trying to get to Britain. Когда были обычные дни, солнечные дни, для меня это не было удивительно. Мирное небо для меня не новость. Когда уже говорили о детях, которые были участниками военных действий, как это было страшно, я не понимала. Но сейчас уже все изменилось. Я это понимала хорошо, с чувством более страха. As Yeva read for us into the night, other women and children refugees were listening. Listening to their own stories, written by one of them, told on their terms. Porika Brown there reporting from Uzhgorod on the Ukraine border. And across Ukraine, as you know by now, a significant refugee crisis is happening. Today, the UN said that 1.3 million people had fled the country as a result of the conflict. Well, earlier I spoke to UNHCR's Chris Meltzer on his phone. He's on the Polish border, helping to coordinate the humanitarian response following the influx of refugees from Ukraine. I asked him how this situation compared with the last major refugee crisis in 2015, when vast numbers of people escaped the conflict in Syria. Well, this is, uh, is we see something unprecedented because we have um, now more than 1.3 million refugees in a little more than a week. Um, and we never had a similar thing here in Europe after 1945, and that was World War II. Even the, the influx after the Russians invaded um, Hungary or um, the refugees after the Balkan Wars in the 90s were not in that high numbers. And this is why this is really a, a humanitarian crisis we have right now. So this is the biggest influx of refugees, exodus of refugees from Ukraine since World War II. Is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. So for the last 80 years, Europe has not seen such a refugee crisis. And Chris, this could just be the beginning, right? It could get a lot worse. Yeah, indeed, we have planning figures uh, and these figures going up to, to four or five million. Right now, again, about uh, 1.4 million. Uh, but yes, if, uh, if the conflict deteriorates, then uh, there will be more civilians who are fleeing. Right now, we're, uh, by the way, seeing almost only women and children uh, fleeing Ukraine. Um, mm. And um, I have seen probably more than 10,000 refugees in my, in my nine or ten days here, um, but only maybe two or three hundred men. Yeah, because the men aren't allowed to leave, especially if they're of fighting age, mm. um, which is, I think, up to the age of 60. Tell me, is Europe even prepared for this influx of people? Right now, I think, um, yes. Um, I see here in Poland a lot of solidarity on, on three levels. Number one, from the government. They are doing a very good job. Number two, from, let's say, organized volunteers like Red Cross, like... Um, the churches, for example, I see a lot of nuns helping here, like Boy Scouts, fighter fire, firefighters and, and, and other people. Um, and um, also very ordinary people who are just doing very extraordinary things, um, like giving a free ride um, across Poland if the people need to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, don't forget, we have a big net of, of uh, people who have some relation to Ukraine. So there's a big um, Ukrainian diaspora here in Poland. And this is now, uh, it pays off now. And at what stage do we start seeing actual refugee camps because people simply can't be absorbed into people's homes? We are not there yet, uh, by far not there yet. Um, and I think before we uh, build any refugee camps or something, we should ask our European countries for their solidarity. And the solidarity is already there. 
Um, I'm meeting here a lot of people on the border. Most of them are, of course, from Poland, but they are also um, Germans, uh, French, British, uh, willing to help. And uh, I received so many emails in the last days from, from people all over, actually all over the world, who say we are willing to, to support these refugees and uh, we have cleared a room and we can, we can host a family or something like that. So mm. I'm quite sure we are far away from refugee camps here in Europe. Do you think that Vladimir Putin is using this exodus of people, of refugees, to help destabilize the European Union? This is the question I have to answer. Um, so we are here to, to help the refugees and, and uh, we try this uh, as good as we can. And by the way, we are still, of course, also in Ukraine. Uh, we have 120 members there, um, our colleagues there, who try to take care of the, of the internal space persons. And um, they're doing a great job. I'm very proud of them. Chris Mezia, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.